Bonjour les amis! Welcome to the beautiful Touraine region and welcome to another virtual tour with France with Vero. I have a, another special place to show you today. The magical place. It is August and yet there are no crowds here in the Loire Valley. Away from the big chateaus I am taking you today to the Domaine de Condé. Not Chateau, Domaine de Condé. It's an estate, but of course, as you might expect in these parts, there is a chateau as well. And as you might expect, things started a long, long time ago with a medieval building. And then in the Renaissance, one of the mayor one of the mayors of the city of Tours, François Brissonnet, from the famous Brissonnet family. You've heard this name if you visited Chenonceau. His granddaughter was one of the women who helped build and design Chenonceau. François Brissonnet designed a Renaissance uh, castle here, a very small castle. And then the chateau changed hands over time. In the 19th century, another owner, who was the heir of an Anglo-Cuban family, transformed uh, the buildings. It was the 19th century, everything that was Gothic and medieval was in fashion, in high fashion. So he added buildings, he transformed the facades in the neo-Gothic style that was in vogue at the time, a style known as the troubadour style. He also developed the estate. The grounds are massive, 230 hectares, so that's about, that's over 550 acres. And he made sure that the estate would be a profitable one. There were vineyards, there were orchards. So this owner in the 19th century really did a lot for the Domaine de Condé. I am sitting outside the chateau right now and as we go through the buildings, the rooms we can see at least, I will tell you the story of the owners who really changed everything. They were Charles and Fern Bedeau, B-E-D-A-U-X. This couple acquired Condé in 1927. And because they were both American, he was Franco-American, they transformed the interior of the chateau. Well, the previous owner had really changed the facades and the buildings itself, uh, themselves. Um, the Bedeau really transformed the interior. They brought modern comforts, uh, American-style modern comforts, to this uh, domain that had been here for centuries. So we're looking at it right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you the back of the Domaine de Condé, because in the back, you can really see the change over the centuries in terms of the buildings. We are now standing in the back of the chateau. And you can really see right away the different architectural styles. The oldest part, of the buildings is right here. This is the part that was added in the 16th century by the former mayor of Tours, François Brissonnet. Of course, it's been transformed over the centuries. But in the 19th century, the owner added this entire section in the neo-Gothic style, the troubadour style. So you really have both. And as you visit, as we visit the rooms inside, we are going to be standing in different sections, but the visit really starts in this corner here, in the older part. We would not be in the Touraine region if there wasn't a reference to Martin, who later became known as Saint Martin of Tours. This is the famous scene where, when he's still a Roman soldier, he shares his coat with a 
poor man he meets on the street. And this is the start of what will become the St. Martin legend in these parts. If you followed my other virtual tours, which you can find on YouTube, I have told his story on quite a few occasions. Welcome to the Domaine de Condé. We are in the entrance here. A lot of wood paneling, as you can see. Very interesting beams on the ceiling. And we are in the older part uh, of the chateau. I'm going to go into the reception hall. Let's picture the owners in the 19th century or the 20th century welcoming guests here. Card game is ongoing. You can see the atmosphere. They've tried to keep the atmosphere from the 16th century manor. The ceilings, a beautiful fireplace too. Now, even though this was a very modern residence, by the time, uh, by the, time the Bedeau family acquired it, everything, was put, everything that was modern was put out of sight. You can see here the old electrical plugs. It was a switchboard in the chateau, about 80 lines with a switchboard operator on site where they could contact the city of Tours and they could also contact everyone in the chateau from one room to the next, to the next. But the telephones were always put out of sight, hiding behind the little doors. You see the telephone there? So here in the reception hall, you can picture them playing or reading. A game of chess here. and an impressive fireplace. Wood paneling everywhere. Here is the dining room. La salle à manger. more of those beams on the ceiling. You see how they're not lying flat on the, on the ceiling? This cake in the middle is known as une pièce montée. And this is what traditionally you serve guests at a wedding. And we will see why in a minute, because a very famous wedding happened here in the chateau. These stone fireplaces that we will see. There are a couple of them in the chateau were actually imported uh, from England by the Bedeau family because they thought they fit uh, the style of the chateau very well and indeed they do. But this would have been the dining room. Something that is very unique at the Domaine de Condé is that unlike other chateaus in the Loire, a lot of them are empty, as you know, and a lot of them over time have lost their furniture. Well, there is a reason for that, but the Chateau de Condé today still has about two thirds of its original furniture when the Bedeau family lived here. They acquired the chateau in 1927. Mrs. Bedeau stayed here until the early 1970s and about two thirds of the furniture she knew here is still here in the chateau. And that's quite unique. This has been made possible because the French state received the Domaine de Condé as a gift from Mrs. Bedeau before she died. She was able to stay here until her death, but she donated the domain and all the furniture. We are here in Le Salon de Musique. 
And I think it's time to talk a little bit about Fern, Mrs. Budeau, who owned the chateau from the 1920s on until her death in the 1970s. Her husband was French-American. He was born outside Paris, went, on to, went to the United States and became what we would call today a self-made man, a businessman, an industrialist, very powerful, very good at making connections. And even if he got married once, he got married again with Fern because Fern had connections. She was from an upper class family in the United States. Originally uh, wanted to become a singer. She trained as a soprano, but they met and they got married. And it was a very successful marriage in terms of the connections that they both had. All these photos here are of Mrs. Bedeau, Fern, the music room, as you can see, the beautiful piano. And once again, in this little closet here is telephone hiding. Fern had exquisite taste and both uh, the Bedeau, um, both, both of them enjoyed the 18th century. So some of the rooms are decorated in that style. Coucou. Now this is the striking room here. It is the library, that bibliothèque, another one of these fireplaces the Bedeau couple had imported uh, from England. Fern was an avid reader, and so her husband built a collection for her over the years in this spectacular room. One of the uh, masterpieces at the Chateau de Condé, the Domaine de Condé, is an organ that was made in the 1920s by a very famous company in the United States. And you see here the visible part of the organ, the keyboard, which is hiding behind here. This organ was actually fitted to work in this room and the two rooms above it all the way to the attic. So as you go up in the floors, the organ just keeps going all the way up. It's been renovated on a couple of occasions. I haven't heard it. I wish I had. So this would have been their library. In each room, you have signs in three different languages that detail the story of each room and the furniture as well. And they tell you if the furniture is original, if it was here when the Bedeau family lived here, or if it came from other places. So that's very handy. And in each room, there is a station to keep kids busy, but in a very uh, educational way. Um, here, they teach them about the trees on the, on the estate, the property. And in each room, there is something for them to do. And uh, the collection, the book collection, as you can see, was quite extensive. Now, I mentioned a famous wedding happened here. At the time, it was called the Wedding of the Century. It was the wedding of American socialite, socialite twice divorced, Wallace Simpson, and Edward VIII, the Duke of Windsor, who abdicated the throne a few months earlier and then married uh, Wallace, his great love. They had a friend in common with the Bedeaux, and so they came here to get married. And this was uh, one of the rooms, I believe the religious ceremony was uh, conducted in this room. They didn't stay very long, but throughout the chateau, because this is really the Domaine de Condé's claim of fame, this is where Wallace Simpson and Edward VIII got married. This is the room, you see photos all over of what the rooms would have looked like through the 20s and 30s when Charles and Fern used to live here and where they welcomed guests. So on June 3rd, 1937, 
Edward VIII, the former Edward VIII, married Willis, Willis Simpson here at the Domaine de Condé. We are now going to see how they welcomed guests. There are eight bathrooms in the chateau because each bedroom had an ensuite bathroom. Like I said, they brought all the modern American style conveniences to the Domaine de Condé. And I think we can safely say that staying here would have been a very comfortable and pleasant affair. Here are Edward and Wallace. They are right there. The picture at the entrance of the Domaine de Condé after their wedding, probably. So how did guests stay here? What was it like to stay here? Well, you might have stayed in one of these rooms. Here they are again. And here is an article, the Excelsior, Friday, June 4th, 1937, the marriage of the Duke of Windsor at the Chateau de Condé. After that, they went on on their honeymoon on the Orient Express to Venice. Here's an example of the incredible levels of comfort that the domain offered not only to those who lived here, but also their guests. All of the eight, uh, all of the eight uh, bathrooms are decorated with mosaics, glass mosaics. Several are in this color, blue, others are not. We will see a few on the way. They had heated towel racks. They had full-size bathtubs that could be filled and emptied in less than a minute. The technology had been imported from the United States. large sinks and separate restrooms for most of them. This one sits in, a, in the corner of the tower, so it's, it's got an interesting shape. You see the walls. Central heating everywhere, so you had radiators in all the rooms. And here would have been a guest room. Twin beds. Edward and Wallace again. And look at this beautiful dress. Very pretty pin too. From everywhere, very tall windows, a lot of light. And the park is all around us, the estate. So from any window, you have beautiful views. Lots of trees. So this would have been a guest room. If you had stayed here, at the Domaine de Condé with the Bedeau family, like Wallace and Edward did when they got married. Now we don't get to go everywhere, but you can see we have to, there's a bit of a workout here to go down there. So I'm gonna catch up with you in a second. Here is the Budo family's gym. Fern was a wonderful rider. She loves to ride horses. She actually competed and she also loved to hunt. She played tennis. They had tennis courts here. You could play golf as well. Stationary bikes. 
and of course radiators everywhere for central heating so they had their own gym weightlifting Here's another guest room and this one is um, the style is very different it's from modeled after le style empire which is the style um, in vogue when napoleon the first ruled france you can tell from the bed here so this would have been for more important guests maybe the furniture is sim significantly nicer in here and it's a green room Beautiful curtains, a lot of uh, remodeling has been done. The chateau that used to belong to the state was eventually uh, given to the, um, uh, to the Indre Loire department, so it still belongs to the state. And it's very well maintained. You do get a workout when you visit the Domaine de Condé. Here's another room. Twin beds. And you can uh, spot a taste for the 18th century in the way this fireplace has been decorated. And then of course, there's a bathroom. And this time, a pink one or a purple one. more of the glass mosaics. Following the signs, this feels a little bit like a maze. I see rooms, doors everywhere. We are in the servant quarters, servants' quarters here. Um, they could be housed in the chateau on uh, different floors based on their rank, or I guess there was a hierarchy as well for servants, but these are pretty comfortable. Uh, this is a pretty comfortable bathroom for servants in the 1920s or 30s. You can see, maybe later even. And of course, you, uh, you had those uh, chambres de bonne, chambers maids, under the rooftops, where the servants could also stay inside the chateau. More doors that are closed, so visitors don't get to see everything, of course. We are very high up here, right under the attic. And uh, this is where we get to peek at the rest of that massive and very unique organ, which is a national uh, monument of France, actually. Uh, that comes all the way up here with reflection I'm not sure that you would see much so I'm going to try and show you more here there we go much better organ on three different floors encased in the house so to speak 
le couloir de service. So this is the, the hallway that servants would have used. And in fact, we've got a few, uh, some hints of, uh, about Downtown Abbey here. Look at this. So this is the panel where they would have, um, when, when they called the servants, they knew what room was calling them. So for example, here you have uh, uh, a bedroom, monsieur's study, salle de culture physique would have been the gym. So the servants knew who was calling them. Can you hear the creaking floors? And we continue. I'll show you as much as I can this incredible place. Stairs we cannot take. Look at that. Keeps going up there. I think I'm okay here. <laughs> More light. Gorgeous, tree, gorgeous, gorgeous trees on the estate. And I think they saved, look at these uh, ancient light switches. <laughs> They've saved the, the last, the best for last. Here, my friends, we are in fashionista heaven. We are in Fern's master closet which today, of course, shows like a history of fashion, French and European fashion in the early 20th century. Now, I know that before her death, she donated, um, or maybe after, someone donated a lot of her dresses and things to the Palais Galliera in Paris. You may know this beautiful building in the 16th arrondissement, which is uh, the Museum of Fashion. And so a lot of ferns, clothes and accessories were donated to the Palais Galliera, but you can still see a lot here. In fact, in this room, you also see some uh, items that uh, Wallace Simpson, the Duchess of Windsor would have worn. And these uh, jewels, of course, are copies, but they're copies of what Wallace would have worn And uh, I won't list all the names I see here, but there is Chanel and Celine. And look at this famous name in fashion as well. So this is really beautiful. I've taken photos of this. I'll be sharing with friends with Vero patrons later. So they can look at the details of all these gorgeous dresses and handbags and accessories. Here, this is interesting. You have two invoices, one by Chanel, one from Chanel, one from Cartier, and they are written to Madame Bedeau. So this would be Fern and Chanel. There's a long list of things that she bought. And the prices on the right hand side may seem uh, they are actually um, what we call ancien francs, the old francs. Uh, Frank, so the franc uh, system changed in 1960 switched from the old francs to the new francs and so those prices would be in vieux francs or well, ancien francs we would say ancien francs in french so we were in the master closet and i am guessing we are now headed to the bodo's uh, private studies and bedrooms oh and the light just comes on as we get close to here this is a closet that was designed exclusively for shoes her shoes in fact, there are quite a few left. And past this closet, you enter Monsieur's study. And there is Monsieur. So Charles Bedeau, like I said, was a French American citizen an industrialist, a businessman, a self-made man, whose gift in life was to make connections. That enabled him to survive through challenging times uh, like uh, World War II, for example, because he had friends in high places, not just 
uh, among the Allies, but also among the Nazi government. In fact, the Bordeaux's um, possessions were confiscated by the Nazi at the beginning of the war, because we are here in the occupied zone, the former occupied zone. But through his connections, he was able to get everything back. He was a very controversial character, shrouded in mystery. Uh, there were rumors of uh, collaboration, um, and uh, he was eventually arrested by the Americans at the end of the war and sent to prison in Miami, where he committed suicide, allegedly, and uh, took his secrets with him. So Fern remained here. She was a widow for many years until her death in the early 70s. This is what he would have seen um, at his desk. His glasses are still here a map of the domain, and then the uh, papier en tête, uh, the stationery for the chateau, for the domaine de Condé. Here he is again in this photo. And here is Fern. This is his bathroom. That color again we've seen in another one with a full-size bathtub. The bathtub looks like it's smaller, but in fact, uh, it keeps going under the wall here. So it is a very deep and uh, comfortable bathtub. Big sink as well. Look at this. And my friends, brace yourselves. We are about to enter Fern's bedroom, her domain. Like Monsieur, she had her own desk. And on the desk, you can see an invoice for the famed designer Jean Patou, addressed to her, dated 1932, March of 1932, and here are the detail of the invoice for several dresses, uh, jackets, pajamas, perfume, earrings, a belt, for the grand total of 41,985 ancien francs. And here, my friends, was Fern's bedroom in the Louis XV style. Like I said, she read, she was an avid reader, very educated, had exquisite taste. And she's the one who decorated most of the rooms we've seen in the 20th century. There is a small room here she called her boudoir. And apparently she was quite fond of spending time there, reading or writing. I'll give you a peek at the boudoir, the owner's boudoir with a little desk. You can see it's heated. And because it sits in the tower, it has this interesting shape. And you can also see stairs going up. There was a, a terrace upstairs which they turned into a solarium or a sunroom. Unfortunately, visitors in 2022 cannot go up there. But I'm sure Fern enjoyed it for many, many years. And I'm going to step back without tripping because it's very tight here. And the pièce de résistance, once you've seen the bedroom, is of course the grandest lightest of all the bathrooms, eight bathrooms in the house. And this, my friends, was Fern's bathroom. The same glass mosaics, except this time you have some patterns. The ceiling that has been recently restored. So it was like looking at the sky. And here, a very comfortable bathtub. Une commode. Incredible room, so much light.
And there she is in this portrait. I'm going to stand aside here. This is Fern. And this, I think, concludes the visit to the section of the chateau. So it's quite a few rooms you can really see for about eight euros, the entrance fee. And there will be absolutely no crowds here. Many people probably don't come here because it's not called a chateau, it's called the Domaine de Condé. And that's a shame because it's, it comes with many great stories, beautiful furniture. And like I mentioned, it's quite unique in that the furniture, two thirds of the furniture the previous owners had here is here at the chateau. So quite authentic. We are only um, 10 kilometers, that's about six miles away from the city of Tours. But there are no restaurants on site. So my advice, if you come to the Domaine de Condé, because it is so vast, uh, you can go hiking. There are several uh, hiking trails on the estate. I would bring a picnic lunch here to make the most of uh, your time. Um, this is where I had lunch earlier, right outside the former uh, hunting pavilion, Le Pavillon de Chasse, which you cannot visit, but you can use these tables. The chateau and the boutique, the gift shop, will close for one hour in the middle of the day, but uh, the grounds are open all day. So if you come here, I would recommend you bring your picnic lunch so you can enjoy your time at the Domaine de Condé. There we go, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of uh, the Domaine de Condé in the beautiful Touraine region. We are 20 minutes, 25 minutes driving distance from Tours, so it's really close to Tours. Uh, there's a bus that comes here as well, I believe, but a car would probably be best to see the domain. When you're finished visiting all the rooms like we just did, you can actually uh, go on several hiking trails on the grounds. There is a potager, there is an orchard, a lot more to see, play areas for the kids as well, and a fun little boutique. But remember to bring your picnic if you're going to see more than the chateau and stay here a little bit, because it's really worth it. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this visit, and if you have, please subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have uploaded this new virtual tour and uh, tips as always are gratefully accepted on my virtual, uh, in my virtual tip jar on PayPal. And um, if you'd like to support uh, this business of mine and encourage me to do more virtual tours, why don't you join our fun uh, community on Patreon at patreon.com slash Until then, à bientôt friends.